Beauty in color, in soft tones and shadings, and in swift rippling motion. Colors of the rainbow. The brilliantly new Chevrolet line for 1952 brings enrichment in design, subtle harmonies in color, meticulous perfection of detail, faultlessly combined to offer a rainbow range of personalized selection in Chevrolet's fine car tradition. Yes, whatever Mr. and Mrs. America and their family want in motor car beauty and usefulness, they find in Chevrolet. In the deluxe Styline four-door sedan, lots of room for the family and easy to get in and out. It makes a beautiful picture. The deluxe Styline sport coupe, smart and convenient. Plenty of room for friends to ride in comfort. The deluxe Styline two-door sedan. It's popular. It's roomy and smart looking. And here is the deluxe fleet line two-door sedan. The body lines blending into the trunk give it a graceful appearance all its own. The special Styline four-door gives full sedan capacity and all of Chevrolet's safety and performance at lower cost. The Styline business coupe has been designed with salesmen in mind. Practical and smart. Plenty of carrying space behind the seat and in the extra big luggage compartment. And the real all-purpose model is the Chevrolet station wagon. Its all steel body with four doors is beautiful, quiet, and easy to care for. Eight can ride in it comfortably or take out the back seats and have the carrying capacity of a light truck. If you like an open car, the outstanding favorite is the Chevrolet convertible. A thrill to drive and a thrill to own. And you can see at a glance why the Bel Air is the style sensation of them all. Whichever model meets your preference, Chevrolet for 52 brings you America's most beautiful motor car. The car that sets the styling trend for today and tomorrow. The grill, cleanly sculpted, features new vertical fins, which with the new and larger parking lights, focus attention on the car's greater width. Massive, gleaming, the bumper curves protectively around the fenders in unified artistry. The colorful new hood emblem proudly symbolizes 21 years of public preference, just as the hood ornament with its swept back jet aircraft wings symbolizes smooth, powerful performance. On deluxe models, the graceful new spear type side moldings carry the eye to the new distinctive rear fender molding, accentuating the car's longer lower lines. With Chevrolet, perfection of the whole is made up of perfection in every detail. As you open the door of a 1952 Chevrolet Deluxe sedan or coupe, you'll find real newness in harmonizing interiors. If the body color you select is beige or maroon, black or gray, the interior color scheme is carried out in harmonizing grays. Here is superb styling in tasteful tones of gray, exemplified by seat upholstery and chevron pattern cloth set off by broadcloth in a solid tone. The feeling of gracious warm color harmony is carried out with impeccable taste in sidewall, floor covering, and every luxurious interior detail. Here a tone of the exterior body color is used to set off the interior treatment. The crisp brilliance of chrome dramatizes the safety sight instrument panel. The lower instrument panel in metallic light gray is beautifully framed above and at both ends by a tone of the body color. 
the steering wheel is newly and pleasingly treated in lustrous black. Throughout the car, the classic symmetry of quality chrome hardware highlights the glamorous interior luxury of royal tone styling. For those who prefer any one of the exterior choices in blue, 1952 Royal Tone Styling offers an elegant interior treatment in harmonizing tones of blue throughout, blending into a perfect balance of finest taste. And for those who choose exteriors of green, again, luxurious Royal Tone Styling brings perfectly matched interiors. Soft shades of green, light and dark, are used for every detail of upholstery and trim. And in 1952, special interiors combine unusual smartness and exceptional wearing qualities. With sidewalls in durable gray two-toned leather fabric, seat upholstery in beautiful checked gray pattern cloth, luxury at lowest cost. Chevrolet's Bel Air is unmatched by any other car in the striking beauty of its interiors. Superb two-tone combinations of soft, lustrous, genuine leather and finest pattern cloth. Here in Beach White and Bittersweet is only one of six distinctively different interior color combinations to harmonize with and accentuate the beauty of the 15 Bel Air exterior color choices. The flashing smartness of the 10 convertible exterior colors is matched only by the richness of the interiors. Seat upholstery, all in finest genuine leather, is offered in five different color combinations to best suit the overall color styling. Chevrolet's Royal Tone Styling puts ever more emphasis on exterior color to offer for 1952 a rainbow of 26 entirely new solid tone and two-tone color combinations. Brighter, gayer, richer, more pleasing than ever before. Shimmering emerald green. Soft spring green and the two combined. Grays that blend perfectly, delicate birch gray, restful dusk gray. Colors that meet in harmony of two-tone blue. Rich admiral blue, quiet twilight blue, glowing regal maroon, warm Sahara beige, mellow saddle brown, gay cherry, beach white with vivid bittersweet, refreshing honeydew, glistening onyx black. Chevrolet, brilliantly new for 52. More people buy Chevrolets than any other car. Chevrolet, the only fine cars priced so low. And when you buy your 1952 Chevrolet, you have a choice of 129 distinctive model color combinations. In Chevrolet, the rainbow is yours.
Washington, our nation's capital, has been visited by millions of Americans, young and old. And here in Washington are some of the boys and girls of the school safety patrols. This visit to America's most historic city will always be a thrilling memory to those who attend the National Assembly of School Safety Patrols. Everyone knows what the school safety patrol does. On street corners all over the country, safety patrols remind people, children and adults, to be safe in traffic. We know that everything possible is done to keep children safe while they're riding school buses. And the bus patrol members keep them safe when they're getting in and out. The safety patrol means more safety in school and on the playground. School authorities, police departments, and public spirited groups have done a fine job of organizing and supporting the school safety patrol. These boys and girls are chosen as safety patrol members because they've earned the respect of their schoolmates and because they can be leaders. Of course, even if we're not safety patrol members ourselves, safety is our business, no matter how old or how young we are or whether we go to school or what we do. But wherever you may be, you'll find the safety patrol helping others in learning to be safe and reminding us all that it's better to be safe than sorry. And sometimes, safety patrol members do much more than is expected of them in teaching the habits of safety. For example, there's the story of Jimmy Adams. One morning early this winter, Jimmy was guarding his corner as usual. Look, Billy. Would you mind waiting for my go signal before you cross the street? Ah, uh, I don't need anyone to tell me what to do. That's just what you do need. Jones, always running, never looking. Well, it's your corner. What do you want to do about him? I don't know. He doesn't pay any attention to anybody. That kid needs to be led by the hand. Say, that gives me an idea. Look, Cap, if I get an okay from the sponsor, can you put someone else on my post after school tonight? Okay. Paul, you take the corner. What are you going to do, Jimmy? I'm going to do just what Paul said. Lead him by the hand. I have a note here from the principal that says, Billy Jones has permission to leave school a few minutes early today. You may leave now, Billy. Billy didn't know what it was all about. But Jimmy did. He reminded Billy that safety patrol members are not chosen to be bosses, but to help others. Now we're gonna do what the patrol member says. Stand here. And as long as we're here, we might as well find out what he does. He stands three feet back from the street. When we can cross safely, he signals us to cross. Like this, see? And we walk. Billy, why don't you get smart? The way you act sets a bad example for all the other kids. Look, there's a boy learning to drive in the high school's driver training car. And Billy, you can bet that the safety rules he's learning while he's driving are easier for him. 
Because he's already learned the safety rules for walking. Jimmy explained the safety rules for pedestrians. Stop at the curb. Look both ways. Wait until it's safe. Then walk across the street. If a car is parked so it blocks the view of traffic, children are to wait on the curb while the patrol member steps into the street. Not more than three steps either. There's no patrol member at the corner. You've got to be extra careful about parked cars. All the way home, Jimmy talked about safety and how easy it is to be careful. And all the way home, Billy seemed to be paying no attention at all. Good night, Mr. Safety. Okay. And I'm going to take you to school Monday, too. I'll be waiting right here. And the next day, Saturday, Billy was just as careless as ever about crossing streets. He just wanted to get those groceries home in a hurry so he could spend the rest of the weekend having fun. Kids are lucky to be alive. And if it hadn't been for you, son, they might not be alive. Thanks, fella. That was quick thinking. You're a regular Mr. Safety, aren't you? Mr. Safety. Billy had been kidding when he called Jimmy Mr. Safety. But the truck driver wasn't kidding. Suddenly, Billy knew it was no joke about safety being one of the most important rules in life. Jim. Hi, Bill. I just came to tell you, you don't need to take me to school Monday morning. I'll be there, don't worry. But you don't have to. I don't? Look, Jim, honest, I've learned my lesson about safety. All right, then I won't take you to school. But how about it, us just walk together? You know, friends. And maybe we could talk about me joining the safety patrol? Okay. Friend, maybe we can talk about the safety patrol. That's why Jimmy Adams and Billy Jones are good friends. And more important, that's why Billy Jones obeys traffic safety rules and respects the safety patrol members. There are thousands of boys like Jimmy Adams and thousands of girls too, helping to protect precious lives by giving up some of the time they could be using for fun. You'll find them on duty in rain or snow, sunshine or storm, proud to be doing their job. Okay. Hi, Jim. Hi, Bill. And many more children like Billy, though they may not be patrol members themselves, are doing an important job of setting good examples for their schoolmates. signal means that the patrol members are off duty. But it also means another job well done. Thousands of jobs well done. But of course, it isn't all work. Some patrol activities are fun. Picnics, hikes, and camping trips. Baseball games. Special movies for patrol members. And other events planned for them because their work is appreciated. 
In America, there are more than 500,000 safety patrol members. They are proud to represent all of us everywhere who know that safety is everyone's business. And all of us, young and old, can help them represent us even better if we follow their lead and try ourselves to be examples of safety on every street and highway every day of the year. This picture, as you can see, was taken in a busy American city. This picture was taken at exactly the same time and at the same spot. Question, how was it done? A modern motion picture camera photographed the traffic in action, while the Daguerre camera, the great-great-granddaddy of all cameras, was used to photograph the buildings alone. The action of this camera is so slow that there isn't time for moving objects to register on the film. On the other hand, the buildings being stationary gradually formed a sharp, clear image. And why use the Daguerre camera? To show that any picture of America without automobiles is hopelessly out of date. Today, the automobile is part of any American scene. Every man, woman, and child in America could go riding at the same time and if we wanted to, we could all ride in the front seat because there is a car or a truck for every three persons, almost 50 million motor vehicles. How many are 50 million cars? Bumper to bumper, they would stretch around the earth at the equator seven times. The distance we drive our cars and trucks every day would take us on five daily round trips to the sun. But the real importance of the motor car is in the way it has opened up new horizons in our way of living. And that brings up a very interesting fact about one out of every seven American workers. Let's see what it is about that one worker out of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sir, what do you do for a living? You've heard of tea testers, haven't you? Well, I'm a toot tester. Yes, this man is a toot tester. He listens to automobile horns in a factory to be sure they are tuned to the proper musical tone. If anybody should ever ask you what the proper musical tone is, it's E flat combined with G. Now let's try again. Uh, pardon us, sir, but would you tell us what business you're in? Why, certainly. I'm a farmer. And uh, what do you grow on your farm? Well, you might say I grow automobiles, because I own part of the four million acres of farmland used to grow raw materials for paints and lacquers and insulation used in motor cars. And you, sir, it seems that you're a miner. What do you mine? I mine automobiles. You see, uh, it takes the miner to dig the iron and the coal and limestone for automotive steel. And then, of course, uh, some of us dig the uh, copper and lead and molybdenum and sulfur that go into automobiles. You might get answers like that in any crowd anywhere, from any one of over nine million men and women 
who make their living directly because of automobile transportation. That's what we mean by one out of seven. Let's see how many it takes to make over nine million people. We'll begin with the city of Los Angeles, which has become our fourth largest city. Suppose every family in Los Angeles should decide for some reason to move elsewhere. Then suppose into each house left vacant, there should move a family of a worker in the automobile industry, the one man out of seven. Actually, Los Angeles isn't nearly big enough to hold them all, nor for that matter is the whole state of California. You see, there'd be the steel workers, the men who make steel for the automobile and their families. There'd be the families of glass workers who make automobile glass. We'd have to find homes for the families of all the workers who build tires and batteries and parts. And we'd have to make room for the 800,000 families of the men in the big motor car and truck assembly plants. Yes, it would be moving day for one out of every seven families in the United States. And we'd have to include the moving van driver and his family too. Because you see, he is one of more than five million drivers who drive for a living. Trucks, buses, and taxis. And while you're about it, did you ever stop to think of how many people it takes to maintain our roads and highways? Well, quite a few. Because on the highway miles of America, we could drive to the moon and back more than 14 times. Well, does that account for one out of every seven workers in America? Not quite. But it does when you add the men who sell motor cars and the men who service them. Moving the families of the one worker out of seven, gradually replacing family for family, we'd need all the houses in California, Oregon and Washington, Idaho, Utah and Arizona, Montana, Wyoming and Colorado, and part of Texas to find homes for the people who make their living directly because of the motor car. And this brings up an interesting question. What would these people be doing if the motor car had remained a luxury for a few rather than a necessity for so many. And what about all the people who depend indirectly on the motor car for the way they live? Looking at it this way, we can fill up all the homes from North Dakota to Texas and from Minnesota to Arkansas, all the way to the banks of the Mississippi with the families of the men who use motor cars or trucks in their business. The plumber, the painter, the florist, the meter man, the rural mail carrier, and of course, the more than two million salesmen on the road. Now, it seems that we've found out something else about the motor car and its effect on our living. One worker out of seven either makes cars or parts or sells or services them. And another one worker out of seven uses the motor car to make his living. Pardon us, sir, but what do you do? Why, I'm a traveling trimmer. Yes, this man is a traveling trimmer who makes his living with his pruning saw and his truck. Yes, for that second man out of seven, there are all kinds of jobs that you might not even think of as being connected with the motor car. The traffic policeman and the people who make and sell traffic lights and parking meters. But would you think of railroad engineers you would if you knew that transporting raw materials and finished products to keep our American system of individual transportation by motor car rolling takes four million freight car loads per year. One sixth of all retail business firms are connected with the automobile. Yes, even including little Jimmy's first business venture, the motor car makes business for America. And one out of every five retail sales dollars in America changes hands because the motor car made it possible. Yes, the motor car has been a key factor in all the ways we do business in America. But it has had even greater effect on the way we live and the pleasure we get out of living. Being able to drive out into the country has made many of us want to live in the country. 
and the motor car has made it possible for millions. Today, suburban construction is more than three times the construction in the city. And just as the motor car is a tool for working, with more than half of us using it to go to and from our daily work, so it is a tool for enjoyment. It puts America at our doorstep for business or pleasure. Whether you're traveling on business or pleasure, the chances are even that you'll travel by motor car. More than half of us take yearly vacations, and most of us take them on the highway. As a result, the tourist and resort industry ranks among the three most important industries in 16 states. We have seen how the Daguerre camera, a camera from the past, can take a picture of the past to show how our horizons have been expanded by the motor car. And the greatness of America has been that we are never content to stop at the horizon we can see. We know that there is another and another horizon beyond. The motor car industry, as it has recognized its responsibilities in our progress through yesterday to get where we are today, is already at work on the design of tomorrow, exploring, developing, testing to improve the cars we drive, to make them safer, more comfortable, more enjoyable. If we are to realize in full the motor car's vast potential for good, we must use it and care for it wisely. The motor car has been the key to open new horizons, not for the few, but for all. And all of us share in the responsibility of safeguarding the benefits it has brought. If we plan for the future, if we look ahead to clear all obstacles and roadblocks, if we recognize the importance of this great individual freedom of movement, the motor car will be the key to our ever-widening horizons of tomorrow. Okay, Dinah? Okay. Take it, Vic. It's a most unusual day. Feel like throwing my worries away. As an old native born Californian would say, it's a most unusual day. There's a most unusual sky, not a sign of a cloud passing by. And if I want to sing, throw my heart in the ring, it's a most unusual day. There are people greeting people, there is sunshine everywhere. There are people greeting people, and a feeling of spring in the air. It's a most unusual day. I keep feeling my temperature climb. If my heart won't behave in the usual way, well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual day. There's a most unusual sky. Not a sign of a cloud passing by. And if I want to sing, throw my heart in the ring. It's a most unusual day. There are people greeting people. There is sunshine everywhere. There are people greeting people and a feeling of spring in the air. It's a most unusual time. I keep feeling my temperature fly. If my heart won't behave in the usual way, well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual. Cut, print it, and let's move on to the next set. Hi there. What a wonderful time for you to drop by. 
You know, they're just setting up to shoot a scene of our new star, and I'd love to introduce you before they begin. Honestly, we're all just bursting with excitement about this brilliant new performer. We think this one will not only win every award, hands down, but it's just gonna win the hearts of people all over the country. Come on now, I want you to meet a great new star. The new 1953 Chevrolet. Isn't that a sight to take your breath away? Wouldn't that new beauty steal any show? I declare it looks a mile long. And see how low it is. And that beautiful, beautiful grill. Every detail is so perfectly designed, I just keep looking and looking at it. And I'll tell you something. You can look at it from every possible angle and you'll still come up with the same answer. It's the best looking car in the whole world. <laughs> there I go getting carried away again. I could just talk about it all day. Okay, take your position, kids. Let's get set to roll them. I tell you what, I have to make a costume change, so why don't you just stay here and watch them shoot the scene while I get ready for my next one, okay? I'll see you later. Let's make it. Action. And as you can see, it's completely new. New from bumper to bumper and so beautiful. The new full-width grill bumper and front end treatment stresses the low road-hugging look with new crispness and new big car appearance. And from the side, the airfoil-shaped fender lines and wide double molding are all new to accent the length and grace of the beautiful Bel Air Fisher body. The car really is lower, yet there's more room inside. The windows have been redesigned for the maximum usable visibility without sacrifice of strength. The bright, extra-wide window trim adds to the airy feeling of the new one-piece curved windshield and the big wraparound rear window, both pioneered by General Motors. The trunk, you'll notice, has been newly designed to give you more space, a larger opening, and level, easier loading. Won't you? Well, thank you. That's an invitation I can't resist. But, Jimmy, you don't mind. I know, Judy. Just wait. And don't you feel luxurious in that roomy interior? I just can't begin to tell you all the values that will be yours in Chevrolet for 1953. This body by Fisher is all new, from frame to hardware. Notice the lustrous sheen of the upholstery. Every detail has been redesigned to give you true luxury styling with more comfort and pleasure. Seems to have just everything you could ever ask for. You'll find out. The instrument panel has been redesigned so that all of the instruments and controls are together within easy reach and easy view for the driver. And it's more beautiful than ever. The steering wheel sits lower out of the line of vision, more comfortable for short trips or long trips. Notice the steering wheel grip. That's new, too, to fit your hands more comfortably. Even the smallest details had the designer's attention. For instance, the brake pedal is reshaped to fit your foot more comfortably. And on what other car would you find a combination of all these things with such luxury features as this year's front ventipane control crank, ordinarily found in only the highest priced cars? It just seems they've thought of everything, haven't they? Sure have. But Jimmy, I just don't understand. You will, dear. You will. Okay, cut. Hold your positions. There now, it didn't take me too long, did it? Are you having fun? All right, let's print that one and get set on the process shot. Oh, you'll enjoy seeing how they do this. All right, places, please, and let's have a test on the scenic background. Process photography is tops in Hollywood's bag of tricks. You see, the cameras are set up so that they photograph the car and the actors and the screen behind them. Now watch. To the cameras, the picture on the screen looks like a real background for the action. Let's make this a take. Camera, action. I'm sure you know Chevrolet's reputation through the years for outstanding performance and economy. But you'll be amazed when you see how much more performance and how much new economy has been built into this new car. That story starts with Chevrolet's great new high compression blue flame engine. And it is all new. 
Of course, the superiority of the valve and head design has been kept. But here is a power plant for your car with the highest compression ratio in Chevrolet history. Made possible by a completely new engine. Here's a completely new power plant to give you a new feeling of power and fast acceleration. Can you imagine getting 115 horsepower and at the same time getting much more economy? And you'll find Chevrolet's leadership with Power Glide, which has been owner approved over billions of driving miles, has been retained in a great new Power Glide with tremendous new performance and economy. Just imagine yourself with a new 1953 Chevrolet. You turn the key in Chevrolet's new key start ignition switch. The choke is automatic. When you shift into drive position, this new power glide starts in automatic low. This is a feature to give you more starting acceleration and to make the job of driving even more fully automatic. When you want to pass, you step down on the gas and power glide automatically goes smoothly into gear to put all that 115 horsepower engine to work to whirl you by in a burst of speed. At highway speeds, Power Glide instantly provides exactly the right amount of fluid power for all driving conditions. Chevrolet has learned how to harness the Blue Flame engine power for unbelievable acceleration and at the same time give you incredible economy even in city driving. You'll find a new brake feel on this new car, smoother, easier operation with pedal effort reduced to a feather touch. Now you can see why I say that it's completely new. Jimmy Jones, I'm not going to wait a moment longer. You know very well we've already made up our minds the 1953 Chevrolet. <laughs> yes, Judy, but Mr. Smith and I thought it would be nice for you to find out for yourself all the wonderful things we're getting for our money. Cut. Good take and thank you. Now let's see those plates. Wasn't that wonderful? And what a wonderful choice Chevrolet is. The choice of more people than any other car. And it offers a choice of three series, the glamorous new Bel Air series, the luxurious 210 series, and the beautiful 150 series. Then, of course, you have the choice of the very finest automatic driving or the finest standard driving. No wonder Chevrolet is first choice all over America. That's good. Dinah, you're on. Oh, OK. Now, aren't you just as excited about our great new star as I am? See the USA in your Chevrolet. America is asking you to call. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA. America's the greatest land of all. On a highway or a road along a levee, performance is sweeter. Nothing can beat her. Life is completer in a Chevy. So make a date today to see the USA. See it in your Chevrolet. Traveling east, traveling west. Wherever you go, Chevy service is best. Southward or north, near place or far, there's a Chevrolet dealer for your Chevrolet car. See the USA in your Chevrolet. The Rockies way out west are calling you. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA, where fields of golden wheat pass and review. Whether traveling lighter with a load that's heavy, performance is sweeter, nothing can beat her. Life is completer in a Chevy. So make a date today to see the USA and see it in your Chevrolet. Performance, safety, ease of handling, economy, 
The search for these qualities in ever greater abundance has long been the dedicated task of American engineering genius. And in no other field has the search been keener than in development of motor cars for the people of America. Over the years, people have come to look to one name, Chevrolet, as the leader in developing the finest at lowest cost with all the qualities most wanted in motor cars. True to this tradition, now for 1953, the magic touch of Chevrolet engineering genius brings to America unbelievable advances in motoring pleasure. It has succeeded in transferring to you a true magic touch. The magic touch of toe to accelerator that brings amazing new experience in performance. The magic touch of foot to brake that brings swift, sure stops with unbelievable ease. Yes, with the all new 1953 Chevrolet, your magic touch puts you in command of standards of quality that exceed all previous records for performance, safety, ease of handling, and all this with unheard of new standards of economy. What's behind this? Simply the story of Chevrolet's years of pioneering, developing, perfecting, culminating in two magnificent new power teams for 1953. One for those who want the modern magic of automatic driving. The other for those who want the finest in conventional gear shift driving. For conventional driving, a new power team offering the amazingly powerful Thrift King valve and head engine, the famous synchro mesh transmission, a new highly efficient rear axle ratio. Here is power for every driving need, an engine designed to give you performance miracles with a displacement of 235 cubic inches, compression ratio increased to 7.1 to 1, Horsepower raised to 108, over 15% more. Designed to work with the Thrift King engine is Chevrolet's outstanding synchro mesh transmission. Easy to shift, durable, and this year more dependable than ever under all circumstances. Finally, completing Chevrolet's new conventional power team and bringing it the last needed touch of balance is a new rear axle ratio designed to transmit to the rear wheels the right amount of power for best performance with maximum economy. This is a power team to make conventional driving history in performance and in economy of operation. Preliminary tests here at the General Motors Proving Ground already have shown that this new conventional power team can deliver up to 40% greater performance, up to 25% greater economy, depending upon driving conditions. Sensational. Just wait till you drive it. But wait till you drive Chevrolet's all-new automatic power team, available as an option on all Bel Air and 210 models for a truly amazing driving experience. Your magic touch brings you undreamed of performance and economy with velvet smoothness and effortless control. The power team that offers the breathtaking new Blue Flame high compression valve and head engine, the great new Power Glide automatic transmission, and the Economizer rear axle. Here is an engine that sets new standards in performance in the low priced field. 7.5 to 1 high compression ratio, 115 horsepower, and Chevrolet engineering thanks to over 40 years of building more valve and head engines than all other manufacturers combined, offers you all this tremendous new power without the need for using premium gasoline. And the rest of Chevrolet's new automatic power team has been precisely designed to carry this new power to the rear wheels with great new efficiency and full economy. The great Power Glide automatic transmission, owner tested over a billion miles, is now more than ever the ultimate in automatic driving, in both performance and outstanding economy.
Starting with the selector in drive range, this great transmission now automatically engages the low gear for a quick surge of power on the getaway. Upshifts to cruising range occur between 10 and 40 miles per hour, depending on accelerator pressure. For greater than ever traffic acceleration, quickly press down on the accelerator and you downshift automatically at any speed up to about 40 miles per hour. As you slow to a stop, the transmission automatically downshifts to low at about nine miles per hour to be ready for the next flashing start. And all this has been accomplished without adding a single gear. What's more, a new control mechanism makes the upshifts and downshifts smoother than smooth. Coupled with the new more powerful 115 horsepower engine, a new larger torque converter of simplified design more efficiently transfers the engine power to the rear wheels. The increased fluid coupling at all speeds provides outstanding new economy by reducing the engine revolutions per mile of travel. Indeed, those who have thrilled in the past at the experience of driving with Chevrolet's velvet smooth automatic power team will marvel at the performance and economy miracles of this new power glide with the great all-new blue flame engine ready at the magic touch of your foot. Finally, rounding out this unparalleled automatic driving team is Chevrolet's famous economizer rear axle with its gear ratio exactly calculated to transmit maximum power with maximum economy. And now, just how well does Chevrolet's new automatic power team live up to the expectations of its designers? Let's look at the proof. Here at the General Motors Proving Ground, we can see automotive history in the making. There's no guesswork here. Nothing is taken for granted. This great new Chevrolet power team has to prove itself under every and all conditions. The most accurate time and distance measuring techniques are brought into play to check and record every phase of a car's operation in performance and economy tests. Figures disclosed by these control tests brought out the astonishing fact that the great new automatic power team delivers up to 30% greater performance in lightning-like getaway. Tests for acceleration at all speeds in city driving or on the highway, the kind of driving that takes you to work, does your chores, or gives you pleasure. Tests for performance and economy that will make new Chevrolet history. And for economy in city driving conditions, these tests revealed that the new automatic power team delivers up to 25% greater fuel economy. No matter where you drive, in city, country, town, or village, in either Chevrolet's sensational new conventional drive power team or in Chevrolet's magnificent new automatic power team, a magic touch will bring you new joys and pleasures in driving in 1953. Matching the amazing new power, the magic touch of your foot on the brake brings a new sensation in braking ease with even greater control because of Chevrolet's wonderfully improved jumbo drum brakes. With a newly designed hydraulic system, which provides up to 23% greater ease of application in making smoother and surer stops. And on the road, on city streets or open highway, the magic touch of your hands on the steering wheel gives you an amazing new experience in ease of control. This year, Chevrolet's long-famous center point steering offers new standards in effortless handling through the addition of two needle bearings, which brings you easier than ever, safer turning and control under all conditions. And finally, for those who want the ultimate in ease and safety of handling, Chevrolet introduces to the low-priced field as an option it's new extra easy power steering. The same kind of power steering available with the most expensive General Motors cars. 
Here, with positive safe control at all times, you can negotiate the sharpest turns, the dizziest curves, the tightest parking maneuvers, almost without effort, with hydraulic power doing up to 80% of the work of steering. Yes, all these things are yours to command. The magic touch of Chevrolet engineering genius offers you a new unheard of balance of engineering in low-priced cars. Magnificent standards of quality for power, performance, safety, ease of handling, and economy. It will give you the magic touch for greater than ever motoring pleasure in the 1953 Chevrolet of your choice. place we call our Hall of Wonders. Really quite a place. This is filled with things that people have wondered about. Let me show you some of them. For example, uh, one day a fellow struck a couple of stones together and he got some sparks and he wondered if there wasn't some use for those sparks. And there was. Fire. Here's a fellow who wondered if there wasn't an easier way to push that big heavy log along the ground. So he put some small logs underneath it. He found a way. Now we call it the wheel. Here's a very famous wanderer over here, Mr. C. Columbus, a gentleman who wondered what was over the horizon. And the man who went and looked and found the world's greatest and most beautiful real estate development. Then the American pioneers, they were wanderers too. They kept wondering what was over this mountain range and the next mountain range. In like fact, we Americans have been wanderers since our very first days. We've not only wondered, we've dreamed about things and dared to do something about those dreams. We've made those dreams work. Alexander Graham Bell here. He wondered if he could send a voice through a wire. And Tom Edison wondered. He wondered if he could uh, perhaps light the world through a wire. And the Wright brothers wondered, wondered if man could fly. And here are a couple of uh, wonderful people. They're wonderful because they inspired those others. And they're real people. And you ought to know them. In fact, if you don't know them, you're not in business. Because that's the American consumer family. Business is wondering what Mr. and Mrs. America want, and then seeing that they get it. They've kept inventors and engineers busy wondering since the earliest days. Someone wondered if there wasn't a better, more convenient way. And there is. Wonder if we can find an easier way to do that. We can. We Americans have wanted things that we've only dreamed about. And things that we've never even dreamed about have often been given to us. For example, we're the most moving about people on the earth. We've never lost our interest in better transportation. Yet it took a dreamer to think of getting rid of the horse. Into the automobile have gone more engineering, more designing, more know-how than any other product in history. Yet it took dreamers, I dreamer, to do this job, starting way back. Let me show you one of the ideas that a dreamer had for the car. To keep from scaring other horses, he put that on the front. <laughs> he really did. Oh, and then there was uh, this delight. 
the hand crank, you remember? This kept engineers happy for years, trying to figure out some way to get rid of it. They tried clockwork and compressed air and rubber bands and gunpowder and whatnot, but they didn't succeed until one day, many years ago, when an early General Motors Research Laboratory engineer named Charles Kettering, who was a very practical man, decided to try one of his inventions, which he called the electric starter. Well, of course, now we use the little key instead of the big old hand crank. Through the years, it's, it's been like that. People saying, uh, why can't we fix this so people will like it better? And someone else saying, well, let's try. The closed body gave the uh, why can't we dreamers and the let's try engineers some problems, problems which couldn't possibly be solved. So they solved them anyway, and made automotive history. What started with uh, trying to get in out of the rain has kept three generations of engineers mighty busy. This seems to prove that there's more than one way to solve every problem. And two, it proves that dreamers are never satisfied. Hmm, you know what this is? It's one of those old floor-mounted gear shift levers. And once a lot of people wondered if we couldn't get along without these. Some were researchers looking for things that had never been thought of before. And their slogan was, I wonder if we can. Design engineers developing new ways of making things better said, well, let's try. And production engineers seeing to it that New products could be manufactured economically. They said, sure, we can make it, but we have a few improvements. Still others were testing engineers, making sure that the new products are safe and dependable and durable. And many, many times they said, it works, but we can make it better. This just because someone wondered what it would be like to drive without having to shift gears. And along with the new idea in automatic transmission came new ideas for engines, engines with more power and more economy. Suppose I'd been sitting in a car like this several years ago and uh, I'd said to you, gee, wouldn't it be swell if steering were real easy like this, especially when you're standing still? Well, you would have said to me, we're already working on that. And so we have been for a long time. We make a few thousand drawings and blueprints. We build and test, oh, maybe a hundred experimental models. Then, if we and the practical designers and the hard-headed production men and the skeptical testers have done our jobs right, well, then the factory men can turn yesterday's dream of effortless power steering into today's reality. <laughs> now, that looked easy, didn't it? And I'm not a bit tired. I want you to see an exhibit now of early American art, one that I whipped up uh, back in the fourth grade. This is the Garraway Dream Car, a real super-duper Macrooney special. I was mighty proud of this, I remember. Of course, I didn't have much to go by about this time. I remember Dad had just traded in the family car, which looked like this, for a brand new beauty. Every few years, the family pride and joy would get traded in on a new model. And you can see for yourself how more than 40 years have changed her. Advanced styling has always been the result of designers dreaming a little ahead of the public's desires and engineers making those dreams practical as soon as the public was ready for them. And even while Mr. and Mrs. America are enjoying today's family car with all its comfort and performance and safety and economy, the designers and the builders and the testers are already at work to make it better for tomorrow. Well, there's been a lot of change for the better in this department, too. I remember my mother used to say there's a little of the boy in every man and a little of the tomboy in every girl. And I think she was right. I think that explains the way we feel about sports cars these days. Well, here's about the happiest automobile I've ever seen. The men who designed this had fun. And the builders and the testers had fun. And while it's never going to take the place of the family car, I, for one, am going to have a lot of fun owning it. Now, this could never have happened unless the world's largest manufacturer of automobiles 
had put its tremendous resources back of the job of designing and building a sports car to uphold American leadership in every field of transportation. They built her to handle like an angel, with every ounce of weight right where it belongs for perfect balance, clean and sleek and efficient looking, and light and strong. And they kept the cockpit simple and practical. For the power plant, they started with the finest valve and head engine. Some extra special features of higher compression, triple side draft carburetors, and dual exhaust give her 160 horsepower. Naturally, the automatic transmission quadrant's on the floor. That's in keeping with sports car tradition. In addition to the speedometer, there's a tachometer to measure engine revolutions. They call her Corvette, and she belongs to the highway just for the sheer and simple joy of driving, for the open road and the country byway, for Mr. and Mrs. America in a carefree mood. Boy, what a car. invited to one of our family arguments. It's open season on fathers. Of course, I don't expect everyone to know about family arguments, unless you happen to have a family. Last month, it was a first stole. Last year, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And with Junior in school and that daughter of mine, but they're not gonna win today. I'm just not gonna give in. Now, you listen to how I handled it. Jezebel is good enough. She's got four wheels, a roof over her head, and... Well, anyway, she's got a nice, lived-in quality about her. Of course, they're kids. But Martha's old reliable herself. So I say to her, Honey, you've got the common sense in this family. Now tell me, what do you think? And she answers, the 1954 models are out. Uh-oh. Here comes the real pressure artist. She'll roll her eyes and say, but daddy, dear, or maybe even worse. And there's the reserve team calling out signals against the meanest man in the world. But I'm not gonna give in easy. J.P. Mudrock has a mind of his own. Up until now, my baby thought I was a reasonable father. Oh, what's a fella gonna do? So I consented to look at new cars. 
I had a cute little gag all lined up. Pulled a wallet out of my pocket with a chain on it. <laughs> the last time I bought a car, the character that waited on me, oh, wow. He wasn't really that bad. He just looked that way to me. But that sort couldn't work for a reliable dealer. Well, I feel better already. He's a good salesman. Tells you what you want to know about a car, and then lets you make up your own mind. That's what I like. Uh-oh. My buttons and bows department. That girl of mine likes sporty jobs. Just like her old dad. Always thinking of me. Or is she? I dreamed I went riding in my very favorite convertible with my very favorite boyfriend. Well, you can't stop a girl from dreaming. Now, my boy is different. He knows his old dad needs room for sample cases and for fishing trips. <laughs> you can bet that's why he's sitting in that station wagon. He's thinking of the old man, all right. I dreamed I borrowed Pop's station wagon for the weekend. And we loaded the rear up for Twin Pines, and it still left us room to pick up Peggy and Jill for the dance. Boy, was it ever keen. That's my boy. Before they get sold on a model that isn't just right for all of us, maybe I better talk to the boss. Even when I buy a suit for myself, well, if Martha isn't happy, neither am I. She knows what's best for our family. So, I tell my friend, if he can satisfy the missus, then he's sold the mud rocks. <laughs> what I don't tell him is that she isn't easy to satisfy. As far as appearance is concerned, we all agree with sister. It's love at first sight. And you couldn't go wrong on any model we saw. But Mother represents all the family, and she's a stickler when she makes up her mind. And I think she's decided what model I think is best. And now it's up to the salesman to prove that she's right. Right off the bat, he starts talking safety for the family. And one of the important features for safety is that in this car, you can see everything. He proves you can. Then he starts telling us about some of the car's exclusive construction features. That body is really built for safety. Well, the missus can see at a glance he's right. But is she satisfied yet? <laughs> Not my girl. She's on the inside now, looking at the seats like she was buying a living room sofa. The material's got to hit her eye. It's got to be strong and durable and the latest. And underneath it has to have quality too. Foam rubber and good spring construction. Then she stretches out to see if there's leg room. <laughs> As for me, if I'm buying a new car, I want one of those gimmicks that, uh, well, you know, it sort of goes under and over and, well, you know. I take a scientific view. And so I asked the salesman what kind of gadgets go with this car. <laughs> he doesn't like the word gadgets. He says, in any car I buy, I'll want convenience. For instance, this door lock is a safety convenience. Lock the door with a button, no fumbling for the keys. There's convenience, a dome light that turns on from the front or back seat. And I'll want automatic transmission and power steering. Now the salesman says I can have them on this car if I want them. If I want them, that's a laugh. Then he asked me if I've seen automatic window lifts. Sure, my boss has them on his limousine. But he doesn't have a push button seat adjuster. I don't let the salesman know what I'm thinking, but I'm saying to myself, oh, wait a second, Mudrock, you're the guy with the chain on his wallet. What are you getting into? But then I remember, it doesn't have to be an expensive car. It should just have the best features of an expensive car. That's what to look for when you're buying a car scientifically. I want a car that's durable. The way 
to be sure of this is to buy a name with a long-range reputation. That's how to get top dollar when you're ready to sell or trade. The salesman tells us he's talked enough about the car's safety, performance, and economy. The beauty he doesn't mention because he sees we're still taking it in. He wants to stop telling and start proving. You should have a demonstration ride. I'm so excited I don't even recognize my own voice when I say, Yes. Good. We'll go this way. The salesman said the car you want should have an all-weather ignition system. All I wanted was to get my hands on that wheel. Well, he said, just sit and relax. Listen to the engine purr. How can I hear it when my heart won't stop pounding? But it's there because we're moving. My friend doesn't even have to mention how this new car handles. Now I get my chance behind the wheel. Talk about excitement. I took it up hills that I used to crawl up. I always wanted a car that would go up hills as easy as it comes down. Now is when I feel like a captain of a ship. Real control. Talk about getaway. This is without even trying. And this extra power will sure come in handy for passing other cars on the road. Real reserve power when I need it. All of a sudden, a crazy driver appears. I stop on a dime. Whew, what brakes. For a second, I thought my heart stopped. Even then, I couldn't hear the motor. One thing they kid me about is my parking. But if it's this easy to turn the wheel, just wait until I get a tight spot. I'll show them. This is it. How do I know? The tough guy, the bear in the family with a lock on his wallet? Well, when J.P. Mudrock hears music, then I know this is it. Well, the story's really over. I'm sold. I'd never buy anything unless I was completely satisfied. Being a scientific fellow, I got a fair trade and reasonable payments. Of course, we started by going to a reputable dealer, and he satisfied us. It's these things that give you confidence, make you know you're buying the right car from the right people. Of course, my wife kept saying, the old car had four wheels, a roof, and a nice lived-in quality. But I convinced her that our new one would add just the touch we needed for the front of our house. But as long as you ask my advice on how to buy a car, I'd say, don't do anything. Not until you hear music. Seventy-five years ago, a man invented the telephone. His name was Alexander Graham Bell. Everybody knows that. But who knows precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind for his ingenious new device? Who knows? Donegan speaking. Yeah? Be right over. At the tone, 
phones, time will be five, five, exactly. Hello, Mom. Daddy, you're home. Do you think this is her first husband? Oh, Lucia. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, I'm not one to talk, but... The number you have dialed has been disconnected. This is a recording. Besides, there's more in life than boys. Oh, I must read you a note I got from Herbie. <coughs> It'll only take a few minutes. Yes, Daddy. I'll call you later. Of all the cockeyed times for the phone to ring. All right, I'll be there. I'm coming! telephone. Few products of man's ingenuity have been so widely used and misused. Today, everybody knows everything about the telephone. But who knows what Mr. Bell had in mind? Also, what he did not have in mind. Here, for example, is Agatha Fewsmith. She's calling a Mrs. Evans about the local church bazaar. But if you were Mrs. Evans, you'd never know it. For some reason, Agatha can't get to the point. The weather leads to summer colds, and summer colds to that nice new doctor in the church membership. And Mrs. Evans is just confused. What's this all about, anyway? And when is it gonna end? Now, by this time, Mrs. Evans feels trapped, and perhaps even a little bitter about the telephone. Oh, that woman. Well, I never. Mr. Bell did not have this in mind. But what he did have in mind is so easily accomplished. All it takes is a little organizing. That makes it easier on you, and it makes for a quicker, more pleasant way of getting things done. Precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind. That's even more important in the big, busy world of business. Yet, in his wildest imagination, Mr. Bell would never have conceived anything like the use salesman Sam Black is making of the telephone. That's just one important feature, Mr. Reynolds. Now, let's talk about the powertrain. Uh, that's right, uh, powertrain. Uh, that's the engine, the transmission, the rear axle. Well, sure, uh, every car's got them. Uh, but the important thing is this. Yeah. Sounds real interested, doesn't he? Mr. Bell definitely did not have this in mind. It's, well, it's unstrategic for two reasons. First of all, you can't really sell a complicated piece of equipment over the telephone. Whatever your product, your prospect has to see its features and see them demonstrated to appreciate them. More important, your prospect has to understand your product's benefits to him before he'll buy. And it's simply too easy to say no over the telephone. In fact, it doesn't take any effort at all. But where does the telephone fit in here? Well, what Mr. Bell had in mind for the telephone was not keeping people apart, but getting them together, using the telephones to establish an opportunity to do a good selling job, or to bring your prospect into the right selling atmosphere. But here's another example of something Mr. Bell would frown on. This energetic young man is Pete Wilson. And believe it or not, he's fairly intelligent, too. He's an air conditioner salesman. And he shrewdly figured out a sales plan. There must be a tremendous concentrated market for air conditioners. All he has to do is cover that market like a blanket. Mr. Bell would approve the determination. But he did not have such a pedestrian approach in mind. Pete has completely overlooked the whole point of Mr. Bell's invention. 
With time-saving telephone calls, our young salesman can quickly determine his air conditioner market. Who is a potential prospect? And who is not? <laughs> and Pete's ready to concentrate his selling time and energy on real prospects. That's when the telephone can really be an extra sales tool to help any salesman create selling opportunities. For instance, with his telephone and an owner list, a service file, or a registration list, depending on his field, a good salesman can literally ring hundreds of prospect bells right from his own office. And, of course, using the telephone strategically like this is just what Mr. Bell had in mind. Yet, even when the telephone is used strategically, unfortunate things happen that Mr. Bell did not have in mind. For example... Hello. Mr. Carson, this is Wally Smith, Dependable Life Insurance Company. With that new home of yours, I'm sure you'll want dependable insurance protection. Not with you, brother. Another brush off for Wally. And it's really not the telephone's fault. Sure, anyone can see that Wally's actually a nice, friendly guy. But he doesn't sound that way over the telephone. Like a lot of other people, Wally doesn't project his true personality over the telephone. And again, the answer is so simple. Before you make your call, try imagining how you might sound over the telephone. I'm sure you'll want dependable insurance protection. And then how you want to sound. Yes, Mrs. Carson. I'll be glad to drop by and explain it to you. So, whoever you are, before you make that next call, think a moment. Remember how Agatha ambles on and on and make sure you organize your call, even writing down the things you want to talk about before you make the call. Remember, too, that you can't sell a complicated idea or product over the phone. So use the telephone strategically to arrange your selling opportunities. And remember how valuable the telephone can be as a time and work saver when it's also used strategically to create new selling opportunities quickly and easily. And most important of all, remember how easy it is to give the wrong impression over the telephone. So imagine how you might sound to yourself. The chances are your true personality will go out over the telephone just as Mr. Bell had in mind. For he was not only an inventive man, but a man of great vision. And even though his first telephone message was sent quite by accident, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Mr. Bell, I heard you. I heard every word you said distinctly. You said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Why, so I did. Oh, it's a wonderful day for you, Mr. Bell. Everything you've worked for, every dream has come true. It works, Mr. Bell. It works. Yes, I... I dare say you're right, Watson. Our experiments have opened up a, a new age of communications. There'll be a day when... when people will think nothing of conversing through instruments such as we have developed. You mean as an everyday occurrence? Well, that's what I had in mind. The day will come when, when people will think no more of speaking to someone miles away than as if they were in the same room. Think of its possibilities. Yes, Watson. I can foresee the day when homes will be linked to other homes. Homes to factories, factories to stores. Cities will be joined to other cities and nations to other nations. But tell me how, Mr. Bell, how can you foretell all these wonders? Well, now, really, who would know better than I? Any resemblance between Alexander Graham Bell and Don Amici was strictly intentional.
Well, there goes Mr. Speed King himself, passing on a curve. Hey, what's the matter, lady? Your arm broken? Hey, hey what's the big idea? All right, pull over there, Jack. You need to hog the whole road. Lady, 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 that stop sign means you. What you're saying is one of the most interesting and important experiments in driver education today. And it proves that some people really do drive like six-year-olds. For example, most of our traffic and motor safety problems are created by a few childishly inconsiderate drivers. Drivers who play childish but dangerous games with everyone else on the road. Lady, lady, that stop sign means you. Well, if bad driving habits are childish, when is the best time to learn to be a good citizen behind the steering wheel? Well, based on the old proverb that as the twig is bent, so is the tree inclined, at Garfield Elementary School in Phoenix, Arizona, a new approach to driving safety education has been developed. School children are learning about the automotive age before they learn their ABCs. Driver education begins soon after school opens for kindergarten classes, first, second, and third grades. First, a magic safety show dramatizes the basic rules of safety. Each year's magic show is new and different and wonderful to behold. And while they're watching the rabbit that comes out of the hat and the mysteriously changing stop sign, even the smallest children learn that the big men in the blue uniforms are their friends. The familiar games of kindergarten have been modernized to teach a life-saving lesson, the meaning of stop and go. First graders get out into the big wide world to learn by doing. Traffic lights, traffic signs, crosswalks become familiar through first-hand experience. And as for jaywalking, oh, not these kids. It seems that the younger we are, the faster we can learn new things. And it seems the earlier we learn something, the more likely it is to become a part of our basic character. Almost every small child has the capacity for learning courtesy and sportsmanship. And these are the simple basics of good driving attitudes. On tabletops, with tiny cars, first graders learn an awareness of the rights of others and the need for rules and regulations to protect those rights. At first, it's hard to see why we have to stay on the right side of the road especially when we don't know right from left. But safety consciousness is something that can be learned along with spelling and arithmetic. And more fun, too, even though it means learning how to wait your turn with self-control and good sportsmanship. But toys are just toys. There's nothing like the real thing. And here's the real thing. Real tires with real air in them, headlights at work, a horn that blows. This car, mounted on blocks, is called the Phoenix Link Trainer, patterned after the famous aviation trainer on which so many pilots learn the fundamentals of flying without leaving the ground. Now, while he's learning, young Mr. Future Driver may rack up quite a few miles without going anywhere. But one proud day, there's that temporary driver's permit as a reward for all the hours of practice. This is it even though it's only a beginner's driving course. Yeah, the first time behind the wheel of the one-boy power automobile in motion. But driving is a privilege that must be earned. Young Jimmy, for example, he had the idea that school was just about as bad as prison, 
And maybe if he absolutely refused to study, he might be sent home. And then he found out that no school, no driving. Today, Jimmy isn't exactly a top student, but he's in there trying. With the help of the older students, tomorrow's drivers learn how to take care of their cars before they drive on the advanced course. The advanced driving course has just about everything that the American motorist encounters in his driving about town and across country. Highways, city streets, crosswalks, pedestrians, traffic signals and policemen, and of course, country roads and detours. Everyone takes his turn at being driver, pedestrian, or policeman. Traffic violators get tickets and are brought to trial before a jury of the classmates. Now, crime just doesn't pay. This batch of hot rodders have had their licenses suspended for a day. At a most impressionable time of life, an important rule of society is learned. Laws are meant not to restrict, but to protect. For three years, in the first, second, third grade, children learn through actual experience the reason for safety laws. They develop self-confidence and the respect for the rights of others. Courtesy and cooperation and sportsmanship are practiced until they become habits. Once established, these habits pay off. And when tomorrow's drivers outgrow the small cars, Safety on two wheels is stressed in the Phoenix program in preparation for the day when actual driving instruction begins. Hey, do you remember your first driving lesson? There seemed to be so many things you had to learn all at once. But this high school student has been driving since kindergarten days. And now, behind the wheel of a fine, modern car, can concentrate on becoming an expert. And with a built-in code of driving ethics, she can soon become a responsible member of the driving community. Even the hot rod addict with his craving for speed is given a chance to release his youthful energies without injuring himself or others. Hot rod clubs organized and supervised by local and state police stage special races under established safety rules. Now, there's plenty of speed here, but the boys themselves will drop a member for even a minor traffic violation. That's a tougher sentence than a police judge could or would impose. While most teenagers behave themselves at the wheel, well, there always has to be someone who's the exception. Someone who hasn't learned that safety makes sense. In the judge's private chambers, the juvenile traffic offender appears with his parents for a friendly but a serious discussion of his case. If he has recklessly risked his own life and the lives of others, his license is suspended. And he's sent to Phoenix's Attitude School for five two-hour classes. In this Attitude School, state, county, and city police officers tell how laws and ordinances are passed by the people for their own common protection. Scientific tests and instruments are used to explain depth perception, reaction time, and muscular coordination, and to emphasize the importance of looking where you're going, of being on your toes, of being careful. Written examinations bring out the fine points of driving. And finally, the Attitude School students ride in patrol cars to see for themselves why safety is important. In the past few years, thousands of graduates of the school have had their licenses restored because their attitudes have changed through better understanding of their cars, and their laws, and their policemen. The parents and teachers and the police of Phoenix don't claim that they've found the perfect answer to the problem of educating drivers for tomorrow, but they have shown what one community can do to help make streets and highways safer and more pleasant for all of us. And here's an interesting sidelight for you to think about. One of the least expected dividends of the program is an improvement in adult driving habits. You see, parents, in setting good examples for their children, learn to be safer drivers themselves. They have to. Tomorrow's drivers won't excuse careless drivers.
the Lee Bonnell family of Hollywood is going? Vacation, that wonderful American institution of going new places and doing new things. The vacation baggage is all packed and the family car is in tip-top shape, all checked and ready to go places. The Bonnells consider themselves experts on how to go places in the family car. Part of the job of being an expert is knowing how to get ready to go. Last vacation, this expert left the lawn sprinklers running. This expert forgot to leave a note for the milkman. So this year, the experts have a checklist. The checklist makes it easy to know what to take. Of course, it also makes it easy to know what not to take. With the family baggage all together on display, anyone can do a good job of packing. A neat trick? When the things you'll want first are the last to be packed, they'll be easier to find. And here's a tip. One bag holding toilet articles, pajamas, and a change of light clothing for the entire family can save a lot of unpacking and repacking. Lee takes an expert's pride in keeping the passenger spaces clear and unobstructed. But even so, blocking that door on the traffic side is a good safety precaution if you're traveling with children. There's a small cushion or two for sleepy heads. And to help stretch distances between stops, a jug of water, some cookies, and dried fruit for between meal snacks without mess and bother. Last item on the Bonnell's checklist, and a good idea for everyone, a spare key for the car safely tucked away in a magnetic container for emergencies. Yes, when it comes to getting ready to go, a real expert seems to think of everything. Philip, are you sure you stamped the lock on the front door when you closed it? Yes, sir, Dad. It's locked. Uh-oh, I just remembered something. My purse. Where is it? It's on the dining room table. Okay, give me the keys. I'll go get it. I hate to tell you this, but that's where all the house keys are, in my purse. Oh. The open road at last, ready to go places. Thanks to three small boys with hidden talent for burglary, only half an hour behind schedule. And who cares about schedules when they're vacation bound? Apparently, Pop does. But stepping on it is not the expert way to make up for lost time. The faster he goes, the fewer the miles on a tank full of gas. Much of the time he thinks he is saving by extra speed may actually be spent in extra refueling stops. Speed is expensive. For the average car, driving costs increase rapidly as driving speeds go up. So take it easy, Pop. That's right. You'll get there more economically, more safely, and probably just as soon if you drive at an efficient rate. Traveling at a steady, reasonable speed will let you cover more miles in a day, relaxed and comfortable. Experts uh, make time by watching for ways to avoid business traffic in cities and towns. They plan their trips to avoid rush hour traffic at morning, noon and evening in large cities on their route. Here's a time saver that works two ways. Whenever possible, combine all your requirements for service, such as gasoline, regular checks of oil, tires, and cooling system, in a single stop. 
Then you'll find you have plenty of time to get refreshment, exercise, and local information on highway conditions. Knowing how to get where you are going is one of the most important ways of saving time. But remember, it's so easy to get poor advice from people you just uh, happen to meet along the road. Yep, uh, down uh, that away. Leastwise, uh, he thinks so. Hey, wait, uh, t'other way, t'other way. Oh, well. Confused. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm sleepy. And I'm positive that old coot told us this was the shortcut to the main highway. There's something written on that sign up there. I'll get out and see what it says. No matter where you think you are, You are lost. With a good map, highway navigation can be very simple. Next time you travel, try marking the route with two pencil lines and closing the highway. The arrows call attention to important information. Some travelers use the map to make an ingenious guide list of route numbers and key mileages. For a long trip, the list is broken into sections, each covering a map or a section of a map. When the guide list is handy to the steering wheel, you can check off the route changes as you make them. Then you'll always know where you are and what to look for to keep you on the road. A knowledge of direction often helps you get where you are going. Did you know that you can use your watch as a compass if the sun is shining? Point the hour hand directly at the sun. Midway between the hour hand and 12 o'clock is approximately so. That's all there is to it. However, you'll find it pays to have a compass if you do a great deal of traveling in open country. When you're going places, knowing how to get ready to go and how to get where you're going are important. But knowing how to relax and have fun while you're going is most important of all. A good driver becomes steadily more alert and more efficient during the first three or four hours behind the wheel. After four hours of driving, his efficiency usually begins to drop unless he knows how to relax. The safest and most relaxed grip on the steering wheel is with the hands in what the experts call the 10-20 position. You'll cover more miles and arrive feeling more refreshed with your back straight and your head up than if you slouch behind the wheel. An occasional change in the position of the driver's seat also helps you stay comfortable and alert. Cross-country travel can be a rewarding experience for the whole family. But there are times when young passengers need something besides scenery to keep them happy and occupied. Here is a game that's fun for all. How far is it to that mountain ahead? Each member of the family guesses, and the closest guess scores a point. Many familiar parlor games become more enjoyable because they're played in a parlor on wheels. Spelling games and guessing games and license plate games inspired by the passing scene. On any cross-country vacation trip, the real expert is the one who takes the time to discover America. East or west, north or south. The awe-inspiring wonders of the Grand Canyon of the Colorado. The spectacular beauty of Zion National Monument. 
mighty Niagara. The sparkling waters of the Atlantic. The historic Southland. All these and a thousand more within your easy reach. Isn't America wonderful? And aren't vacationers wonderful too? We're the boys. We've come hundreds of miles to see all of this. Why aren't they out here to enjoy it? Oh, they're back in the car planning next summer's vacation. They're reading a book. Reading a book? Mm-hmm. I think the title is How to Go to the Moon. <laughs> Thank you very much. I beg your pardon. I represent a national opinion poll. We're making a survey. Well, how do you do? I've been waiting for years for one of you folks to get around to me. Now, frankly, I think the... Sorry, but this survey is on customer buying. We want to find out why the average American customer has changed so much in recent years. Well, I didn't know we had. Oh, yes, when it comes to major items anyway. Everybody knows that. I didn't. But you certainly don't buy the same way today as you did, well, as you did eight years ago, do you? Well, no, no. You're right about that. Now, if you just tell me why you changed, I'd be very glad to... But... Well, I'll try. Thank you. Well, now, first, uh, let me tell you what happened to me when I went out to buy eight years ago. For example, I'll tell you about the time I wanted to buy a water softener. And the chap who tried to sell me the water softener must have had a hard head. You know something, mister? You're lucky you're in a hoot owl. I am? Yes. Last one we got left. Oh, well, uh, would it be too much trouble to see it? No, no, not at all. Here. Here's what the ultimator looks like. Oh. Well, how much water does it take to, uh, Flush the tank on this size unit. Oh, not much, I'd say. Probably tells you all about it somewhere here in the folder. Uh -huh. Well, will I be able to uh, bypass uh, my outside water tap? Oh, so, so. Well, well, that is, I, I guess you would. Tell you what you do. You ask the man that installs it. By golly, he should know. You should? Yes, sir, that fella fooled me all right. For a while, I thought he knew more about his product than I did. And I didn't know one end of a water softener from another. <laughs> yes, well, uh, now, more to the point. Oh, yes, yes. Then, there was the time I tried to buy a lawnmower. There you are. I hope you realize what a lucky break you're getting. Yeah, yeah. I looked all over town, but I didn't see anything like this. Are you sure it's a good mower? Mister, all you gotta do is look at those steel blades, sharp as razors. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of a guarantee do I get with it? Guarantee? Yeah. What are you trying to do, pal? Hurt my feelings? Well, you can give me service on it, can't you? Well, I suppose. At least for as long as I'm around here. Eight years ago, it's amazing how many dealers and salesmen didn't stay around. Then there's a time I wanted to buy a refrigerator. Look, Mac, what's it worth to you? You mean am I looking for a discount? Discount? Look, there are mighty few of these babies around town. Mighty few, Mac, you get it? You can't touch one for less than a hundred bucks over list. A 
hundred dollars over the list? That's the picture, Mac. Take it or leave it. Back then, you had to be willing to bid high, or you did without. Well, of course, it's different today. Well, well, let me tell you about a salesman I was talking to a couple of weeks ago. And that's the whole story of our latest model. Mm -hmm. 22 brand new features. 20 of them exclusive, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, here's a mighty funny television program. Do you ever watch it? No. Well, why not? Well, you see, I don't have a television set at home. Oh. Uh, you were telling me about some special features in this set. Oh, yes. Uh, as I was saying, this is our latest model. Mm -hmm. 22 special features, 20 of them exclusive. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see what good the special features will do me. <laughs> That's nothing hard to understand. Like I say, this new uh, beamer ray screens out all static. Except in certain areas, of course. Well, you see, in my living room... Oh, uh... yes. You get installation and maintenance by a national organization of uh, factory-trained experts. <laughs> I wanted to get that in. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, sir, uh, you were saying... Uh, I, I say we have a, a problem at home. Uh, the, the sound sort of bounces. <laughs> well, you won't bounce. <laughs> yeah. That's the latest thing in hi-fi. Hi-fi? Yes. Chinese set, I bet. No. Today, I still run into... Begging your pardon, lousy salesman. Well, what was wrong with him? He seemed to know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. But he never did explain just what good those features are to me. Then there's another kind. The dealer with the questionable reputation. Uh, take the sweater I was trying to buy as a birthday present for my wife. I'm sorry, but in this survey, we're only interested in major items. Well, my dear young lady, to me, a woman's sweater is a major item. But all right, take the problem of price. Now, just last week, I was looking for some power tools. I walked into a drug store. Yes, sir. These quarter-inch drills are the most popular power tool in America today. And I can give you a good price on one, too. Yeah, I know, but I need something I can use as a, as a, as a saw, I think. Saw, bore, burnish, plain, sharpen, shear, grip, cut, buff, polish, sharpen, stir, <laughs> anything, sir. And you can't get a lower figure than ours anywhere. Uh -huh. Well, you see, uh, I plan on putting a slatted roof on a uh, kind of a patio. Tell you what, make it a deal right now, and we'll throw in a couple of carpenter's aprons with your name on as a bonus. Well, what do you say? Yeah, well, uh, first, uh, I better go and measure and see if the slots fit the slats. Like. You see what I mean? He was trying to sell his product to me on the basis of price alone. Oh, don't tell me that isn't important. Well, of course it is, but I couldn't see exactly how his product could help me with the roof over my patio. Well, then you didn't buy one. No, ma'am. I'm still shopping around. Then you have changed. Eight years ago, you wouldn't have shopped around. Because I couldn't. But today, times have changed. Conditions have changed. Today, I don't have to put up with the salesman who doesn't know his product. Or the salesman who thinks more of price than he does of my interests. Or the salesman who doesn't seem likely to be in business come the time I need his help or service. Don't you see? It used to be take it or leave it. I certainly don't have to take it anymore. Everybody's got good products today, and a lot of them. Yes, today I can shop around. Not that I particularly want to. Well, then why do you do it? Because I look upon buying as a very personal matter. And I like to deal with a salesman who'll see it that way, too. How do you mean? Well, now I had one come over to see me the other day. He seemed to be the type of fellow in whom you could have some confidence. He was clean shaven. Yes, Mr. Huber? This is an exceptionally clean, reconditioned car and very low mileage. I drove it over so you could see for yourself how well it meets your particular needs. My needs, you say? Yes, sir. For example, you have uh, three children. That's right. Then you need a car that uh, will offer a lot of extra room and plenty of trunk space, too. Comes in handy when you're traveling with a family. Yeah, of course. Uh, you do a lot of city driving, too, don't you? That's right. 
this car is especially easy